Hello, it's Jim Brown here with another amateur video for the Outrig Project in modern multi-hull history. This is about a boat that's brand new and public response to this one has literally run us down. <laughs> that was close enough. <laughs> I got the idea for this boat from the very crudest trimarans I've ever seen, the East African Ungalawa, which I mistakenly called Janganda, had jointed cross beams. So I dreamed up this boat that had very simple hull forms so that anybody could build a thing and it would fold out for sailing and it would also fold in for trailering without disturbing the tenting platform. And now, as of May 2010, we have the oh, real yeah. thing. Uh -huh. The delightful little vessel, thanks in large part to this man. Tell me who you are. My name is Will Lafice. Uh -huh. And I'm the very first owner of a Sea Clipper 20, as far as I know. <laughs> as far as I know, too. <laughs> okay. So Will had the gumption to order the very first one. Of course, they had John Marple's extremely thorough plans to work from. The details are bone simple, and they said the construction was really fun. For example, here's the Marple's brilliant false transom kick-up rudder, pure function, and uh, yacht hardware from the hardware store, and mostly lumberyard materials throughout. Now we get the chance to move aboard. This standard Walmart dome tent is seven feet square, $19, and fits perfectly. But there's a real difference from camping on the ground. You get to sit on the bunk pad and put your feet down in the footwell. Many nifty details are to come from camping in this boat. Now it's time to raise the mast, much simplified by those temporary shrouds leading down to the eye bolts. And note that the cross beams will articulate independently of the rig. And this means that you can set up a tent whether or not the boat is in a campground or in a narrow monohull berth or out in the anchorage, rig up or down. And yes, the mast and sails for this design are lifted from many of the endemic beach cats, widely available used. And the hulls are designed to travel on any flatbed trailer. Just a simple platform bolted down to the frame. Any three-quarter ton trailer with an eight-foot wide flatbed can be fitted with these simple blocks to support the outer hulls. Finally, we moved her to the launching ramp, re-stepped the mast, and tightened up the crossbeam bolts, just snug as all they need. And Scott's kids wanted to ride her down the ramp, so I put them aboard, and in she goes. Well, at least she floats when empty, but I wanted to find out how she floats when loaded. So we put three guys and two kids in the cockpit, and the water line at the transom looks good. And here she is at the stem, and her trim is nice with about 500 pounds aboard. And it looks like the small angled flat in her on the bottoms are going to give us a soft enough ride. But now for the real moment of truth. Boy, as soon as the wind hit those sails, I realized we had a nice boat under us. These very light airs will tell you a lot about a boat's overall performance. She carries a light weather helm, just what we need. And her dagger board operates very easily. And she has what a sailor calls clean heels, leaving very little wake when passing through the water. And most important of all, she tacks dependably. Without backing the jib, and she comes out of the tack still moving forward. Without mushing sideways even in these ghosting conditions. Of course, jiving a trimaran is a piece of cake, especially with the boom well above the sailor's head. Now, we had very little wind for our trials, and this picture shows the main hull bow wave moving diagonally across the picture and missing the float. And even in these zephyrs, the windward float is lifted above the water where it belongs. 
And yet, when running into a motorboat wake, it produces very little clapping and splashing. So it looks to me like these floats, together with these slightly flexible cross beams, produce a sea kindly motion. But Scott and I wanted real waves, so we sailed out the St. Augustine Inlet into open sea. It's better than I envision you envision it. Yeah. <laughs> There was still very little wind, but the boat went along just fine in the chop. No water thrown on deck. Now we could see about downwind steering. How does the helm feel now? Oh, great. Yeah? Okay, it's not much of a test in these conditions, but we did get a little boost from some of these waves on the way back in, and the control seemed firm. With the new rope rigging, you can make your adjustments right on the spot, user-friendly. Now it's time for Karen and the kids. Okay, we got Nathaniel and Isabel, three, four, five, six. Seven. Eight happy people. <laughs> and there's the water line forward with about a thousand pounds of payload. And there it is, back aft. She's pushed down about four inches. Okay today, but definitely too much for real wind and chop. Jake can really spread out. No. In this sheltered water, he even can ride on the float deck. It's pretty nice seat over here, Jim. You need a lawn chair. <laughs> Karen said that she was also comfortable with the kids on board. I see him. You yeah, guys? Right okay, straight ahead. By that green mountain. Hey, line. dolphins. See that green sun. It's kind of far there. There they are. See them? By now, Will was beginning to wonder if we were ever going to give him his boat, so we never had a chance to test it in real wind and waves, but that will come. And in the meantime, let's hear it for the flat spar swing wing cross beam, an idea whose time has come again. Thanks to the ancient East Africans for suggesting the idea in the first place. And I think we're going to see a lot more of it in the future of modern multi-hulls. They have a fascinating past with much of it to be seen at outrig.org. There's lots of contemporary action at smalltrimarans.com. And to see some of the plans for the Sea Clipper 20 and the new 24-footer now, please visit www.seerunner.com. This is Jim Brown wishing you and the good little ships Jangganda and Ungalawa fair winds.